Welcome GDLers to another edition of Scripting Adventure and today we're going to look at buffer manipulation. Now don't get frightened by the term, it's just a way to get Archicad to temporarily remember some numbers so that you can use them later on. In the last video we set up these different desktop geometries using our conditional statements and we repeated the prism command in each of the conditional statement lines. In this video we're going to take out the prism statement and load the coordinate lines into buffer memory. This is called buffer manipulation, and it means that we can get quite complex with our coordinate line generation and calculation, and also with our conditional statements, getting quite sophisticated with how we generate our geometry. So let's just explain what buffer manipulation is and how it works, and then show you how it works in practice. A handy toolbar to have open is your Edit GDL Library Parts toolbar. Make sure that under your Options, Work Environment, Model Rebuild Options, your Interrupt with Error Messages is turned on. And let's open up our Help, which is under Help, Documentation, GDL Reference Guide. That will open the PDF version, and the online version is at gdl.graphisoft.com, and click on Reference Guide. Open our object by selecting it and going File, Libraries and Objects, Open Object, pay attention to the shortcut, or by clicking on this button here, Open Object. We'll restore down using this button up here. On a Mac, it's right click on the tab and choose Undock. We'll open our 3D script in the pop out window. And what I'll do is I'll just take out these prism statements, put them down the bottom. So this one is gone, this one is gone, and I'll just comment that out until we're ready. You find buffer manipulation in the help under control statements, parameter buffer manipulation. Now, as I said before, don't be daunted by the term. It simply means telling Archicad to remember what you give it until you ask for it again. Why would you use this? What's wrong with using variables or arrays? Well, with the generation of complex shapes and geometries, you often have to use loops or conditional statements to get the final set of required coordinate lines. And the help's got a good example where they're doing a tube through a curve and they have to generate the points through that curve. Trying to use variables in more complex scenarios just isn't possible. So you load your coordinate lines into the buffer and then use those coordinate lines in the buffer when you generate your final geometry. There are only four statements to use with buffer manipulation. Put, get, use, and NSP. Now put means Archicad, remember these numbers. Get means Archicad, give me the numbers I told you to remember and forget them. Use means Archicad, give me the numbers I told you to remember and keep on remembering them. And NSP means number of stored parameters or Archicad, how many numbers are you remembering right now? So let's look at the put statement. Now, if we look in the help, we see that put requires at least one expression and any number of optional expressions after that. So let's say I have a statement of put with E1 through E6. Now I've just used an example here with E to stand for expression. You'll notice I can have a carriage return in the same put statement, as long as there is a comma to denote that I've gone to a new line. So the result of this statement is that we now have six things in the buffer, each with their own position, in the order that I put them in there. So it's first in, first out. If I was to use the statement NSP, the result would be six. I've got six things in my buffer, so NSP equals six. If I was to use the statement use two, the result would be E1 and E2, and the expressions would all remain in the buffer. 
If I was to then use the statement get to, the result again would be E1 and E2, but this time they would be removed from memory and I would only have four expressions left in the buffer and their positions would change accordingly, with E3 now being in position 1. So if I was to then use the same get to statement again, the result this time would be E3 and E4. Because I used the get statement and not the use statement, E3 and E4 would be removed from memory, leaving E5 and E6 in positions 1 and 2. So how does this look in practice in our code? So our coordinate lines will now use the put statement. And so what this does, I'll just unindent it a bit. So you use indents to show where the statement belongs. So I'm in an if statement here, so everything within that if statement is indented. I've got my put statement here, so everything belonging to that put statement is indented. This one will be put at the front. And as long as I've got a comma at the end, I can keep on repeating my carriage returns and then no comma for the final line. This one here, put. Now down here, we need to know how many coordinate lines there are going to be. Each of these conditional statements have a different number of coordinate lines. So how do I figure out what this n number is going to be? Well, each of our coordinate lines has three expressions put into the buffer memory. So zero would be expression one, zero would be expression two, 15 would be expression three. So what you do is you go number of stored parameters divided by three. That gives you your number of coordinate lines. Then we need to get our coordinates at the bottom. I don't want to use them again, so I'm going to use the get statement, not the use statement. And so then it is get NSP. And that's it. That's as simple as it gets. So let's check our 3D, make sure it's working. We'll go to our 3D view. There's our square desk. I'll just turn this onto some black pen so we can see it. There's our square desk. Rounded. And chamfered. Still working, except now we have used the buffer manipulation to make our code more robust and adaptable. Now the danger you need to look out for with buffer manipulation, with storing things in the buffer, is that you need to make sure that the memory is cleared after your operation. If you don't clear it, one, you could fill up your memory and your computer will crash. That's not a common occurrence, but it is a possibility. And two, you're going to get unpredictable results next time you go to use the buffer because it will still have stuff stored in it that you haven't cleared and you'll be left scratching your head as to what's going on. Now in the code we have, it's quite simple to understand and we know that we have cleared the buffer. There's no way that the code can get past here without clearing our buffer, so we're good. However, it's not always that simple. Sometimes your scripts are so complex with their if statements that sometimes they use the buffer, sometimes they don't, sometimes you've got all sorts of different things going on. So it's handy to have a little bit of code that you can insert to clear the buffer when it's not always assured. And that handy bit of code is if NSP then trash equals max of zero or get NSP. So what does that mean? It means that if there's anything stored in the buffer, so if NSP is greater than zero, then trash, which is just a made up variable name, will equal the max of either zero or the clearing of the buffer by using get NSP. Max, let's have a look at help as to what max is. Now I don't actually know where max is. I know it'll be in here under 
probably expressions and functions somewhere. I like to use the PDF help as opposed to the online help. It's a personal choice, but the reason is it's so easy to search the PDF. So max, here we go, statistical functions, it's under functions, or I can just click on this here. So what is max? Max will return the largest of an unlimited number of arguments. Syntax is max, x1, x2, and so on. So there you go, that's a nice handy little bit of code to clear unpredicted results in a buffer. Now while I'm here, I may as well just point out this little idiosyncrasy with the if statement. If you only have one line of code within your if statement, you can bring it up onto the same line as your declaration and you can exclude the end if. So this if statement only has one line of code, the trash equals max zero get NSP, which means that I don't need an end if if I've brought it up onto the same line. That's why I can get away with it being in one line. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you learned something and I hope you give it a go yourself. In the next video, we'll talk about dynamic stretchable hotspots. So I'll see you then.